These are the chairs that I bought on Facebook Marketplace. They were $40 for the pair, so $20 a piece, including the two ottomans. And I really like them because they've got this square leg. You can see that they've got this very square leg profile, and that's the style that I like. The arm part is a little bit curvier than I would like. I would have preferred that the straight, but it'll be fine. So I'm gonna make a slip cover for these, including the ottomans, and then I might resell them because they're huge. So let's get started on the slip covers and we'll see if I have enough fabric. I'm using a fabric. The fabric that I'm using is something that I had. I would love to do these in some kind of a beautiful vintagey looking floral fabric, but it's not in the budget right now. So I'm just gonna use what I've got. Got myself put together a little bit and let's start with the supplies. So you need welt. If you're gonna use welt, which I highly recommend it, a good pair of scissors, pot o pins, your fabric, and that's it maybe a knee pad. The first thing is the inside back and the deck. Let's remove the cushion. So just start by draping the fabric. I wanna make sure that I have a little bit of extra down in the front, but I'm gonna go from the inside back all the way down to the deck and then all the way down to the front. And I'm not gonna do a skirt on these, so this is just going to be welt around the bottom of the chair. Let me bring you in closer so you can see a few details. And actually, as I stand back, I can kind of see the pattern of the fabric and I can tell that I need to straighten it out. So I'll bring you in. So you can sort of see the grain of the fabric because this is a linen. And I can see that it's a little bit off. No, it's not straight, square, and on grain. And I know I talk about this a lot in my videos and have a whole video on just that topic. It's pretty important that you get your fabric straight, square, on grain. However, if you're a beginner, just have it in the back of your mind that you want to keep your fabric straight, square, and on grain. Don't let it keep you from getting anything done. Okay, I think that's good. I can see that. Let me stand back and look at that and see if I can tell that that's more. Yes, okay. This side we're not going to cut. I'll leave that as is. We've got a little bit of fabric tucked in here. Not real deep, but enough. A little tuck here. We've got enough down here that I can put a welt on that and then put a velcro on the bottom of the chair and velcro that to the bottom of the chair. So now I can go ahead and cut this piece out. This right here, actually, let me see, do I have enough to, I might just move this fabric over to address this. Let me bring you in. I might pull this over because if I can get down the front and around to meet this piece here, so this will be one piece here and then there'll be this placket thing here with welt going all the way around it. It would be nice if I could bring this around and put a seam here and then this will just get a like a dart here. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slide all this fabric over enough so that this will meet here rather than having to put a separate one little piece here. Okay, so what that means is there's gonna be a little bit more waste here. It's gonna make it a lot easier. All right, so now I can start cutting. So when you're doing upholstery, you cut around your pattern with about a two inch leeway, but with, a, with the slip covers like this, I actually go about four inches and then I'll even and then I'll trim that down later but I do that just because there's sometimes a little bit of shifting on the piece and you just want to make sure you don't have to cut a piece twice and then I'm going to start up here and work my way down making sure that I've got enough fabric into the crease. And making sure I've got enough in there. Because like my mom always said, it's better to have a yard too much than to be an inch too short. Cut off a little bit of that. 
so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple relief cuts where I know I need it. And that's right here. I put one there, another one here. So this will start to lay down. You see right here, this needs to come around this edge and then we're gonna put like a, a dart right here. But this is gonna have to have a relief cut in order to for this to lay down. See how that just releases that? Let's see how that just let that fall down. I could go even a little bit deeper with that. Anyway, and then I need a really couple relief cuts at the top. Definitely need a relief cut here. And I'll need to go in a little bit deeper there, but I'll do that as I'm pinning. You see how that just allows that to lay down. I'll go a little deeper here. So now we'll cut this piece here. So this was the off cut piece. So I'm gonna use that here. I'm making sure that my fabric is not sideways, that the grain of my fabric is actually up and down parallel or plumb. That's why it gives you like this extra on the inside. And I'm going to start pinning this. So now I've pinned all the way down the inside of the inside arm. I'm going to just tuck it in and make sure that I got, I've got enough fabric to tuck into this inside arm here and make sure that nothing is starting to pucker or create any creases there. And I'm not gonna go all the way down into the uh, crook of the sofa because this inside arm is going to do that. This piece is going to be cut here and will connect here to the inside arm. And it looks good, so I'm gonna cut here. So here's the welt around the side of the arm. I'm gonna give myself a good three to four inches here. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. We're gonna pin the two pieces of fabric following this curve here. Because the bottom line is, is this piece has got to come up to here so that these two pieces can be pinned here. And I'll have to put relief cuts, otherwise they won't join. Okay, so remember this is a reverse pin fit. So there's the welt, you can see it here, it comes around this arm. Now this piece will join up to there. So let me cut this one now. Okay, inside arm. So this piece needs to come all the way over the top, all the way around to this underneath the arm here. Here, and it's gotta get all the way back to there. Okay, cut this. around the front here. I'm not sure how this will go yet. That, all right, let me turn this so you can see what I got going here. So this style of wing chair is a little bit complicated. I wouldn't suggest it for a beginner. I would probably do more streamlined wing chair. This one has this strange like front plaque with this weird rounded thing. This is gonna come around like this. This piece will come here and we'll have a seam right here between these two pieces like this. Something right here. Okay, so this will come around like that, and then we'll have a seam here with this outside arm. So let me go ahead and put a couple pins here. Put that in place so that I can trim. Okay, 
Okay, so now we'll make this placket piece here. So what I'm gonna do actually is just push this down. And I'm going to use Moth Cut. So I'm gonna need some relief snips in here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just guiding that piece of welt around that front curved arm placket and following the welt that's currently on the upholstery so that I can make this slipcover welt the same shape. So I'm just follow it. Well, I just cut it there in order to make it easier to get around there and not have to manage that whole long piece. But so yeah, now I'm just following it around, feeling for the welt underneath there, and then pinning that welt to the fabric that I'm using for that front placket. So I'm just feeling and pinning, working around that curved piece. Okay, so now I'm joining the end pieces. So I'm just cutting them so that they'll be a little bit uh, closer in length. Then I'm opening up the one side and cutting out a piece of the welt. So here I'm about to cut out. So I opened up the fabric and I'm cutting out a piece of the welt. And then you basically just tuck one end into the other and then fold over the fabric so that you have uh, a nice clean edge, no raw edge there, and then pin that down and you'll sew right over that. And now trim off the excess fabric. Now that will be used over there because we have to pin this inside out because we're doing reverse pin fit. So now this will fit on this side. I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew this welt to the fabric so that it'll be stable. There's the jelly bean all sewn together. Now I just have to make one more and then we'll be on our way to a slip cover. See how that fits? Mm -hmm. So here we go with the inside arm. This can be tough to pin it without getting my head in the way. But now we've got that bean there. I secured it with some pins. I need to put a relief cut here. I should probably just cut off a little bit of this, but. Okay, let me bring you in close so you can see what I'm doing. So there's the front of the bean here. So we've got to pull these edge pieces out because we're gonna now pin from here all the way around. I'm gonna have to cut some relief snips. Like this, so that pin this to this. Okay. Back around that side, cut some of this off so that I can see what's going on here. Uh huh. Do you want to walk the Walgreens with me? I do. Give me a moment. She wants to go too. You're on a leash? <laughs> I'm being so for real. Okay, now I gotta pin down there in like the crotch of the chair. Now I've got a pin here, here, and here. So we've got everything pinned in the front. Gotta come around this corner 
I've got to make this a little deeper, this relief cut, so that it will lay down. This needs to be pulled a little tighter, but... Okay, so we've got this. So this and this has got to come together. So I think what I will do is just do a straight dart here. Okay, so see that? Now, same here. Off. All right. So when I go to the machine, I will sew this first, and then I will sew this, and then down this, and then this will attach to the outside arm. Now for the outside arm. Okay, so this is pinned. I can take some of this off. Okay, so I actually didn't do up here. Let me show you this real quick. Pin this back. So we put the welt here and there's the welt. All right, so that's this part. Let me pin that up so you can see that. And then this is this part, which this has got to go around that way. So we've got to put a relief cut here in order for it to be able to go around. And I think I got to go around the outside and we need a relief cut here. Here's my biggest tip for my best tip for wing chairs is don't do them. <laughs> Go for a straight armchair. Don't do wing chairs. They're difficult. If you're a beginner, start with something square and straight. So I gotta go farther. There we go. There we go. A little bit more here. I've gotta get in front of the camera a little bit. Okay, now let me cut some of this off so we can see. I think that's gonna have to go a little bit further, actually. So I have to cut the relief cuts into this area a little bit deeper so that the top of that arm fabric will lay down smooth without those creases in there that you see. So I'm just cutting it a little, the relief cuts a little bit deeper here so that I can pull that fabric back a little bit farther, a little bit tighter on the arm, and then repin it. The, these parts, there's a lot of little finagling with the fabric to make it lay down nice and flat in order to get a really nice finish. So you just have to be very patient and take your time and finagle the fabric, take out pins, put them back in, it's just a lot of little tedious finagling here. I think that's better. So what I'm doing is I'm basically putting the welt right on top of this metal tack strip or tack trim and then pinning it. All right, so the last thing I've got to do is this side piece. And then the back piece. So obviously I have to still do this, all the same stuff, but on the opposite side. Clearly you're making a slip cover. If you are still here at this point in the video, you're actually making a wing chair slip cover. So kudos to you. As you can see, I'm sitting here in not the blue chairs. 
I brought that fabric in after I put this outside arm on and I sewed up the slip cover and I ended up hating it. I just, the fabric was just eh. And I didn't want to go through all the trouble of making both slip covers and then just really not liking the, the slip cover. So I just scrapped it. I sold the chairs like the next day because I just sold them pretty much for what I had in them. And then I looked for another, I wasn't even actually looking for wing chairs. I was just looking at Facebook Marketplace and I came across these two chairs and they were $25 for both of them. So they were even cheaper than the blue ones. So I was like, oh, that's an easy decision. So I went and picked these up and they were like in my neighborhood. So they were at a storage unit. Somebody had them and they just wanted rid of them. And I went and picked them up. It was so easy and I love them. No um, ottomans, but really I didn't need ottomans in this space anyway. So I didn't want to scrap all that footage because I feel like there was a lot of tips and tricks. So I posted it anyway. So sorry that it's not, it wasn't a finished product. But if you're making a wing chair and you want more instruction, I've got a ton of videos on slip cover. I have a sofa video that will show you how to finish the back and put in a closure. I've got a bunch of slip cover videos. If you want to slip cover, uh, finish slip covering your wing chairs, you can check out this video right here for the sofa slip cover. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer your questions. You can DM me on Instagram at Mimsy and Co. 